really neckly. Last time I came with uh, shorts on, and we're only uh, what 30 yards from the actual tunnel now. But that's the foliage behind me, so it's quite quite intense. These nettles are like six foot high. It's uh, it's proper nettles at your own level nettles. Oh. So uh, just next to the two trees there. You've got uh, a metalled uh, graded off area and basically below it you've got the air vent and uh, it's not a great drop. Uh, it'd feel it if you fell down it. So you're looking about 30 foot to the uh, ground floor and uh, let's see if we can uh, have a bit of a, a mooch on through. I stand on top looking from above. You see nothing. So uh, I think it's a bit of a time to uh, escape off uh, the estate and uh, get in that tunnel now. So uh, better check these the, uh, before I go in. Just give it a bit of a, a whiz and double right. This is uh, actually off the front of a car, this. Uh, I've kind of done a bit of a retrofit to my uh, Ryobi uh, torch here. Uh, not a clue what that is, but it's about to fall down, that's for sure. Uh, big steel door on it, though. Uh, it might have been like a storage area for servicing things for the uh, tunnel. Because uh, it had racks inside it, so so we've got one of these concrete troughs, and these troughs all run inside here as well. Uh, so you've got to be careful. If you fall in one of them, bang your head, and you're on your own, and you're not unconscious. It's a bad day. So this is really, really boggy in here. I cannot tell you how boggy this is. So these are these pits which I told you about. So. that this hasn't been maintained for the last 50, 60 years to the standard of the railways. It's actually pretty damn good. Don't know if you can hear some squeaking ahead, but this place is just full of bats. Shortly after this place was built, it uh, it fell in. Now, I don't believe it's at the other end where it fell in, but uh, it's uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, basically, when it fell in, uh, some people died actually. Uh, but it only just been actually built, funnily enough. You would have thought it would have been fine, but uh, no, people died in that one. So, and uh, they resecured it. And they decided that they needed to have 
a cut in the middle of the actual tunnel. And uh, the cut I'm talking about is the one which you can see just down there. Or at least I think. Uh, so, uh, and basically they cut a whole section out um, just so that uh, they could uh, have a safer tunnel. Now, there is um, a heritage railway which really wants to open this up. And my word, would it be good for um, that of tourism and everything else? Um, but to uh, have a whole, um, and, I quite, and I think quite rightly so, has actually said, not in your Nelly. And the reason being, and the reason why I think that absolutely Bob on was that, because I'm not sure if this heritage place would actually have the money to be able to maintain it. <coughs> but High Peak Bury Council or um, Peak, uh, Peak District National Trust have uh, kind of said that they would like to open it up for people to walk through and cycle through. And I think that's a lot better, a lot better idea. Uh, you know, it would be great to have trains running through here, but when you're in a tunnel, does, does it really matter? You know, you can't see it out, really. So, and this is at the end of the uh, Monsal Trail. So it would just be reopening past where the viaduct is and uh, basically just uh, doing that uh, yeah opening up the uh, Monsal Trail uh, viaduct area bringing it all back in and over into a walkable area and uh, yeah that'd be pretty sweet that uh, Has it gone cold all of a sudden? My word, that's unreal how quickly that went cool down. <coughs> but unlike when you're going at a height or when you're going at going down in a tunnel, you, it's a normal thing, you, you get a right good coldness, but it's, it's on the same level. Uh, however, the tunnel has got a lot higher all of a sudden. So, in fact, you can see it. Well, you might not be able to actually. I'll try and do it. Uh, I don't know how that'll turn out on the video, but basically, that little ridge there, uh, you know, there's like another four or five foot, and that has given enough airflow for it to just go really cold because it's that temperature all the way along and it just keeps its temperature. Now I'm trying to be really quiet here because we're basically right under Haddon Hall now. Oh, you can see that it uh, then goes back to the same height again, and then we've got the uh, bell-shaped uh, air vent. You can't really tell it's bell-shaped there, but it is slightly bell-shaped, and it's not quite in the centre. It's just a little bit to the side they've done it. Don't know why. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so the only reason I particularly know about this place is because of uh, Pat Dickinson and he did a fantastic video going through this. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? You're going to pick his video now aren't you? 
well you're already on it so watch the end and I'll put a link and you can watch his video there <laughs> uh, but yeah it's just really cool and exciting this place uh, I probably won't be able to get as good a picture as Pat did because the only camera I've brought with me is my uh, mobile phone so So, anyway, so this is a section which I told you about, which um, basically just breaks up the railway. And they had to do this because of safety reasons, really. Anyway, we'll uh, continue on. And uh, I don't know if it was part of Haddon Hall thing, but uh, I certainly did put quite a few of these in. More than I've seen on like lots of others. Uh, and, and this one is really good because you can see the actual pipe and the water's flowing this way, which is good because at the other end, it's under about four foot of water because yeah. I checked uh, it earlier on. Yeah, and I got a little bit cheap here because they started using their red bricks instead of the beautiful stones which she started off with. Makes me wonder if they kind of showed the Lord of the time. That, you know, this is what. So much a wonderful job we're doing, and it's. And when he inspected it, he kind of went, Right, the rest of the tunnel will just do in normal bricks. He's seen this. It's uh, effervescence. And this is just the uh, salts of the limestone and the cement just coming out into and onto the walls. Yeah, I think it actually looks quite beautiful here. Really. So. so when you're in a tunnel like this, what you're looking for is slight bulges. And there is a slight bulge just slightly ahead. So I'm gonna be a little bit cautious. Because uh, when uh, the curvature is starting to bow and give, that's when you have problems and you have cavings. Now this tunnel runs uh, is it a kilometer and uh, or just shy of it by a foot. Now I've heard of kind of dual sink toilets, but I've never heard of dual manholes right next to each other. Uh, now, I am pretty certain this was a double um, track. Um, and if it wasn't a double track, um, I'm pretty sure that you could just be at the side anyway, without any problems. But if it was a double track, and I think it was, them, uh, them little holes to the side are pretty snug. Because uh, one of the other things which you get when uh, you're in these little manholes, uh, 
when a train comes past, you have a blow which comes at you. And once it's slightly past you by about a foot, you have a, a sucking. Uh, and uh, <laughs> look at it. <laughs> it's like one and a half bricks. That's it. the old timbers and this my friends is this here that is a um, cable kind of tie in a sense and it would just keep the cables for electrification against the side of the walls very so often you just see little bits of them let's see if I can get a so you can see one there so they had uh, two cables, and then it looks like they had another one lower down, and that was for the electrification. Uh, but uh, it's a shame because the uh, electrification probably came in, and basically the next year that was it; it was all gone. Uh, yes, it's a bolt, but it's a pretty big bolt. Now I've got size 11 feet, so it's a bit of a whopper. Now getting further and further toward the other end, I had more and more anticipation about what may lay ahead. I was a little bit worried about falling into the holes. But certainly today I don't have to fear that at all because you can well hear the water just running through the veins of this place. And uh, you get a good indication of uh, where these uh, places are. So it's actually pretty damn good. Well, there is certainly daylight at the other end. And uh, there's another daylight coming up soon. And that's just... So, it's uh, quite a little bit more uh, tree over and uh, vegetated over since uh, uh, Pat did it last. <coughs> Pardon me. Too much pop. There's some uh, ironworks. And then we'll just, uh, I think, that for uh, joining tracks together around the south, I think. Not sure. So, I was actually a little bit wrong. There is another air vent. Uh, and uh, just before the end, I just couldn't see it this time. And uh, we've also got uh, the uh, <coughs> shotgun cartridges from uh, maybe a shoot which they've had. Um, or clay pigeon shooting above and they've just uh, flicked them down. So. You can't particularly see it, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and uh, there's like a breeze block which is out. Uh, it's, and I'm actually walking or to so need to put some wellies on. It's been epic, it's been wonderful, it's been pretty good. Yes, it's all about you, but 
I do actually get a kick from it as well. So we're in it together. Actually. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have enjoyed it because that's what it's all about. So if you've liked what you've seen today, um, it's all for you. So please subscribe, ring that bell for further notifications and I will see you all again soon.